Operation Santa Flush. During the Vietnam War in November of 1965, Vietnamese villagers came across a small crater with a strange object that fell from the sky while making an unrecognizable sound. Fearing that the device could explode, they approached it carefully. But as they wiped away the dirt, they could hardly believe what they saw. After surviving a bombardment from American forces, the Vietnamese locals were surprised to notice that a peculiar device had hit the ground without detonating, and it didn't look like an explosive. As they closed in on the crater, they were surprised by what they saw. A white porcelain toilet bowl with tail fins, a nose like a bomb, and an American Air Force logo, as if it were just another piece of artillery. The fake munition was dropped from a U.S. Air Force VA-25A-18 Sky Raider flown by Commander C.W. Bill Stoddard while on a Dixie Station strike mission to the Mekong Delta. The toilet had been hidden from base commanders under a secret code name. Only a few officers knew that Stoddard's crew was carrying a unique object to commemorate the six millionth pound of ordnance dropped. One of the squadron captains had saved the damaged toilet from being thrown overboard off their aircraft carrier base in the South China Sea. The crew decided to disguise it like a bomb and instill some terror into the enemy. The antic drew a lot of jokes from air intelligence about germ warfare. A Stoddard Sky Raider took off from the runway before the mission. Bridge Control said over the communication lines, quote, what the hell was on 572's right wing? The entire mission was captured with a camera mounted to the wing of the A1H, which was renamed the Paper Tiger II for the flight. Stoddard's wingman, Lieutenant Commander Robin Bacon, was almost struck by the flush toilet when it was dropped. The distinctive delivery ordinance whistled all the way down until it hit the ground. But before Stoddard had dropped the payload, he read the list of weapons that the aircraft carried to forward air control. As he got to the last line, Stoddard said, quote, and one codenamed Operation Santa Flush. Wing and a prayer. Mid-air collisions during air shows and military exercises are not uncommon. Because of modern aircraft security measures, these occurrences do not necessarily end in human tragedy. But colliding mid-air against a high-speed fighter jet losing an entire wing, and safely landing with almost no visibility is quite the feat. During an air combat training session near the Negev Desert on May 1, 1983, an Israeli McDonnell Douglas E-15 Eagle collided with the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk. It looked like both aircraft lost contact with each other while maneuvering, and the collision was unavoidable. The Skyhawk's pilot managed to eject shortly before his aircraft disintegrated, but the F-15 continued flying out of control. The F-15's crew, pilot Ziv Nadivi and navigator Yehoar Gal, could not see any damage as a vapor cloud of leaking fuel obscured their view. It was only by engaging their afterburner that the crew could finally stabilize their rolling aircraft in level flight. As the skies cleared up, they realized that one of their wings had been entirely sheared off in the collision. Gal suggested an immediate ejection, as he did not believe there was a way they could land the aircraft without a wing, but Nadivi decided to attempt the landing. By maintaining a high enough speed to maintain lift, the pilots were able to land the aircraft with only six meters of runway to spare. The F-16 landed at twice its average speed and lost its tail hook during the perilous maneuver. Both men miraculously survived. In a subsequent interview with the History Channel, Nadivi said, quote, It's highly likely that if I had seen it clearly, I would have ejected, because it was obvious you couldn't really fly an airplane like that. He also recalled that when McDonnell Douglas engineers arrived to repair the aircraft, they said, quote, Okay, the F-15 has a very wide body. You fly fast enough and you're like a rocket. You don't need wings. Bump and run. When German V-1 missile attacks on Britain began in mid-June 1944 during World War II, the Royal Air Force undertook Operation Trotter. The plan was to use fighter aircraft to spot and intercept the German rockets near the coast before they could strike inland targets. But machine gun fire had little effect on the missiles, and RAF fighters came up with a swift solution. The technique they eventually used was highly dangerous, but also surprisingly effective. 
The average V-1 missile flew at 550 kilometers per hour and reached an estimated altitude of 1,000 meters. Only the Hawker Tempest was fast enough to catch them in flight and destroy them mid-air before reaching their target. Even though Great Britain had less than 40 Hawker Tempests available for Operation Trotter, it was their only option at the time. The fighters were in direct contact with the Royal Observer Corps. The organization would first spot the enemy rockets from their coast post at Dimchurch and send the data to the Royal Air Force to take them down. Machine gun fire was ineffective on the rocket's steel hull, and the risk of an explosion made early missions overly risky. While new countermeasures were being developed, RAF fighters developed a technique to bump the V-1s off course. The dangerous feat involved slipping an interceptor's wingtip under the lower surface of the rocket's wing to disrupt the airflow. If properly executed, the V-1 would suddenly tip upwards, override the gyro guidance, and send it falling out of control. It is believed that at least 16 V-1s were destroyed with this method before newer fighters could take over patrols. Later in the war, anti-V-1 sorties known as diver patrols were launched with American P-51 Mustangs and other Tempests to strike down more than a thousand bombs. Makovica Miracle On January 14, 1975, 33-year-old East German pilot Major Peter Makovica was on a training mission when he encountered trouble while landing. Makovica fought at the controls to steer the aircraft away from a factory, trying to land at an empty field nearby. He was ordered to eject immediately, but if he obeyed, the aircraft would hit the building with thousands of workers inside. As Major Makovica approached the Kotbus military airbase, a cover latch opened over the engine compressor and cut his MiG-21's thrust. He notified the control center and attempted to restart the engine, but nothing happened. The aircraft began to lose altitude quickly. The Air Control Center commanded Makovica to deploy the ejection seat and let the aircraft crash, but he refused and disobeyed the order. If he ejected, his MiG-21 would crash directly into the textile combinant Cottbus that was staffed with thousands of workers. Makovica was not willing to risk so many innocent lives. The pilot attempted to guide the plane into an empty field for an abrupt landing, but reached a residential area behind it instead. The factory was miraculously avoided. At 10.15 a.m., Makovica crashed into a five-story building. The aircraft hit the second and third floors. Fuel from the aircraft began to leak into the apartments, and many residents jumped out the windows. Makovica and five women lost their lives on the scene. News reports around the incident were censored, but the fighter was later photographed lodged in the side of the building. Two days later, a patch on the wall that can still be seen to this day was the accident's sole evidence. A commission established to investigate the incident concluded that Makovica may have saved thousands of lives with his decision. The ground technician who failed to properly close the latch was sentenced to five years in jail. It is believed that Makovica was the only German hero awarded the Battle Order for Services to People and Fatherland in Gold for disobeying orders. Fire Hedgehog Near the end of World War II, Soviet forces had the idea to enhance their close air support with a new weapon called the Fire Hedgehog. Mounted on the bottom of the battle-tested Tupolev Tu-2 frontline bomber, the device could unleash up to 80,000 rounds of ammunition per minute through 88 guns that loaded at once. The action made for quite an imposing sight, but its actual effectiveness had yet to be put to the test. The Fire Hedgehog consisted of 11 rows of eight PPSH-41 submachine guns that would have typically been used by Soviet troops on the ground. It also used P-41 incendiary rounds that could easily ignite targets at close range. These rounds were more potent than the standard 7.62mm ones used by the infantry. A strategic sight in the cockpit allowed the pilot to aim all 88 guns at once as they were lowered out of the bomb door and fired simultaneously. Each of the mounted guns could hold a 71-round magazine, and it took over 100 man-hours to fully load a strafing run. But the contraption only allowed for four seconds of fire before running empty, further limiting its potential. The aircraft could be used only once before returning to base to reload. Ultimately, only one experimental plane, the Tu-2SH, was outfitted with the Fire Hedgehog to test its capabilities. 
file showed that when flying under 800 feet, the aircraft could shred targets in an 1,800 foot long by 4 foot wide area. For the PPSH-41 submachine guns to be fully effective, the aircraft had to get as close as 250 meters to the objective, exposing itself to anti-aircraft guns, nearby tanks, and machine gun nests. In the end, the Fire Hedgehog was an exciting experiment that ultimately proved to be flawed.